we had the excavator roughing our pad here for us and I had him leave me a pile of gravel so we went along and tamped everything now we're just fine-tuning it a little better and uh, getting it all nice and flat so we can lay our foam down this is going to be a reverse monolithic slab so um, we're going to lay foam on this on this vapor barrier and then we are going to uh, well we lay plastic on our down for our vapor barrier then we're going to put the foam on top start right in that corner lay it right uh lengthwise this way Length, lay it this way lengthwise right on the edge of the foam so we're just going to lay all this foam out and the uh, foam board is actually four foot bigger than the than the whole place here so we're going to have basically wing foam sticking out when we're done two foot around the whole thing and uh, that's what we're doing Chris is building up Chris and Mike are over there building that corner up was a little low I had to build this corner up over here but we're just gonna lay this foam on here and then I got I got Clifford over there he's got a load of stone in there we're gonna dump some stone on top of this uh, um, two inch foam board here that's gonna give us it's gonna be a heated slab uh, the line what line the painted line that we buried that's long gone no no it'll be good just drop them right in there just gonna lay them right on. Look at that, huh? Then I'm gonna back the old dump truck in here and dump some stone right in the middle. Watch that, huh? What we're doing, guys. Should be seven pieces going this way. So I can't lay another piece over no, here. just keep going right here because I'm gonna back the dump truck in here. Oh, we're this all in. It's got to be stone on top of it. Yep. Yep, got it. Just like uh, we did over to Jimmy's there. That Remember that? Yeah, over to Jimmy. All right. Over to Marina. So we got seven pieces of foam over here. Our building's 24, so our foam is 28. And we'll get two rows here. They could probably shut that tamper off, huh? <laughs> Just keeping it running Just in case we need her. All right, I gotta get in Clifford and I'm gonna back up and dump some stone right on top of this thing. Then I gotta go get another load of stone. That's about all you're gonna wanna do right there. Oh! Good! Yeah. Okay guys, so this is what we got done yesterday. We are dumping the stone right onto the styrofoam with Clifford, the big red dog. So then we're just trying to take the excavator and kind of level it out and then rake it around. <clears throat> this is a mono slab, as you can tell. So we got our forms halfway up. This form is square. Chris measured out, I don't know, probably like 20 some feet and squared this section so that that's all good. We got it staked, basically stake it right through the foam. That holds our form board. And then I'm gonna bear it. This is all gonna get buried, this foam detail on the outside. So we got some gravel over here. We're gonna bury all that. <clears throat> And then, uh, you know, the dirt will come up. There'll be insulation here too, and this will all get buried. So there's two feet of wing foam around this thing. That's the way we did it. We built the whole thing basically four foot bigger. So there's two foot around there. And we actually made the slab about four inches bigger than the actual 
um, building that's getting built on top of it. They're going to build walls right on top of this slab. So that gives them a little bit of wiggle room to square things up. I don't like to try to make the form exact where they want to build their walls. We got a water line in over here. We had to put that in before we could put this section of foam in because that water line right there goes down about four and a half to five feet straight down. It got a 45 on it and another 45 and it goes all the way over there. And that's just a marking pipe so they can find it when they go to dig up their water line. And then they can run around the outside over to the front over here. There's a water, uh, city water spigot. And that's how we're doing it, guys. Um, there's going to be a plumber that comes in when we're done with this. And he's going to have to get a plumbing line down. He's going to have to move a piece of foam out of the way. But that's no biggie. He's going to have to cut just for one um, four-inch line going out for his sewer. So I'm not sure where that's all going to be. So probably out this corner, but I'm not sure. Maybe out here because that's flatter. But <clears throat> that's what we're doing. So I'm going to get in Clifford here and dump some more stone on there. The boys are coming with the truck full of tools. Basically got to put one more piece of plastic over here and one layer of foam turned sideways. This slab will go all the way out to that orange line right there. So we're short on plastic. We're going to run a strip down through here and put one more piece of foam on there. So that's what we're up to. Get some of the stone out, guys. Go through the cold too. A little sticky. There it goes. We got what we could get out of the excavator. Now we're fine tuning it. This is all going to be built up, so I think I need one more load. I already put uh, three in here. That's how we're going to do it. Pretty handy old Clifford the Red Dog for doing this kind of stuff. I would focus on the back because I can get this with the excavator, you know what I mean? I can't reach like this over here okay. if we do all that down through there i can't reach any of that okay i'll get one more load and i'll grab it and just put it right in there with the excavator the next one well guys i got me loading my own truck here and i'm not too good on this whole loader there is Clifford the Red Dog. Like I said, I am not good on a loader. I've never drove a loader very many times. Maybe a couple. And I don't really want to hit my truck, so I'm just going to take it nice and easy here. Get used to this, these controls are kind of different. Oh, but it 
powerful. I'll show you what it looks like from the outside. I'm just putting it back where it came from. It's got a pile of crushed limestone here too. what the old girl looks like. She's an old case 621B XR it says. There's Clifford. I gotta check out, make sure I'm good. Not me and my little buddy riding with me. Clifford the red dog. I accidentally blew my horn, I didn't mean to. This air horn, every time I reach in my pocket I Stun my leg and blow the horn it's down by your left foot. I think I got about five yards. I might have a little more on here this time. There's another way to get the stone in. I got Clifford back right up here. I got it tipped a little. And I'm just going to use the excavator with the ditching bucket and swing over and dump some gravel right in there where I can reach because I can reach I can reach pretty good. I can get out. I can get up into there, get a bunch of it right there. So that's what I'm going to do. Alright guys, we got this all ready to go. We just waiting on a plumber they got to put some plumbing over in here so this is what she looks like got her foam all in we got rebar just laying in there we'll pull them out and drop them in when we pour uh it's gonna have radiant heat so we got to do that yet yeah. i had to do a bunch of dirt work i sold a bunch of dirt over here and put it over in this hole here that's what she looks like i had to do a bunch in the back here too Drops off pretty quick, but serves the purpose. We're just loading things up. We're gonna go home and cut this foam. We gotta cut 10 inch pieces of foam to go around this. Once we strip the form, after we pour it, we'll put foam up against here and backfill it probably with some of that fine stone. So that's what she looks like. It only took us like a day to do this. We worked on about half a day yesterday and Maybe a little more than half a day today. And that's what it looks like. So I got tubing ordered from uh, Supply House, some oxygen barrier tubing, half inch, and that's what we're gonna use for our radiant heat. And uh, that's it. See you in a little bit. All right, guys, we are putting some tubing down in our mono slab here. We're running like, um, 250 foot loops on it because that's what comes out good um we did a little bit longer over in this garage has its own zone there's a garage gonna be right here single 20 foot over there's a garage so that's got uh one loop in the garage and we're about to finish this up we're doing it like we usually do just running these uh little wire ties oh, where is it right there those little wire ties and uh, tying it right down to the wire mesh. And then we're going to pour this bad boy tomorrow. It's a reverse mono slab as you've seen in the video. We put the foam down and built up from there. And this is how we do our manifold basically. We just use uh, electrical conduit. And these are actually Madura T straps right here. We just put screws alongside of it. And it holds those conduits right in. And we will take that um, piece of wood out of there when we pour concrete after it stiffens up a little bit. We'll pull those yep. two uh, rods right out of there, those stakes, and you'll never see it. We'll take that all apart. So we just roll the tubing right out like Chris has got it right there. We just roll it right down the line and you get a guy rolling it and guys tying it down. Just use that spinny wire tie right there. Just ties it right up, boom, real quick and easy. And we tie it every three feet, so we count six squares. 
And uh, once you get a grid established where you're tying it, you can just follow that grid. As you can see, our ties line right up at three feet. And then sometimes it's easier if you go lengthwise with these longer pads, these rectangular pads. But this one with the garage, the way we did the garage worked out a little better to go sideways. You just got more bends. Takes a little longer, but it only take us about an hour and a half to do all this tubing. So it's not bad at all. About an hour and a half. Look at that. Biscuit coming out of the woods. What are you doing, Biscuit? Pooping? He's a woods pooper. <laughs> He's a woods pooper. He pooped in a pricker bush. <laughs> hey, you gotta go, you gotta go, right? <laughs> oh, you can't make this up. All right, we gotta get back to work. All right, guys, we are ready to pour our 24 by 56 slab here, mono slab. It's gonna be heated mono slab, obviously. You can see our styrofoam detail. You'll probably see it in the video anyway, but that's how we made it long. Put the stake straight, straight through it. And then when we pull this board off, we're gonna put foam around the whole thing and backfill it. We're just waiting on mud. Guys, it's a uh, um, 10 o'clock pour today. It's actually a nice day. It's probably like 70 degrees. It's not too hot, not too sunny. It's pretty shady on this one end. My old buddy Roder's over here. He's got himself all kinds of wound up. Bro, look at you. How did you manage that, Bob? How did you manage that? I'll have to unhook you here, buddy. Come on. You crazy dog. I gotta get him in a minute. But anyways, guys, stay tuned. We're gonna be blowing this thing out here. We're gonna try to pull the truck straight in and we can probably reach about 20 feet. I'm not sure we're gonna end up wheeling any of it, but if we do need to, we got the Brentwoods here. If we gotta wheel that little bit of the back, but we're gonna shoot for like a six slump. We can just probably rake it right in. And uh, we won't be pulling this wire mesh up. This concrete has fibers in it, the big fibers, full size fibers. So uh, we're just gonna pull the wire along the footer area. And we have some rebar that we're gonna put in there. It's all pre-bent sitting here. So once we get that filled in, we'll press our rebars in there. And they'll be right where we want them. Like I said, we'll pull this wire on the edge here because of the mono slab. It's kind of rolling down, so I want to get it up in there. Where the tubing is, we don't pull it up because we don't want the tubing to be near the surface, which is going to damage the tubing when we do our relief cuts. And when they build their interior walls and stuff, you really don't want that. Um, you don't want that tubing up near the surface, so that's why we do it this way. The wire is just holding the tubing where we want it. So stay tuned. Be with you in a minute. Here comes the mud, guys. See who our driver is. Coming down the line here. Circle T, baby. 315-963-2231. Looks like Mike. I ain't seen him in a while. What's up, Mike? How we doing, buddy? Good, good, good. We're gonna pull you right in straight on this side and see if we can shoot you all the way to the back. We'll put all your shoots on and there's our credentials, guys. 315-963-2231. Circle T ready mix division. Got my old buddy Mike driving. He's a I've been working with this guy for years. He's drove for uh Vitaly concrete for years. I used to work with them. I still do once in a while with their pumps. Our Circle T, baby. We're gonna get ripping here. I'll get this thing on a tripod for you guys. All right, guys, we're gonna get them right as close as we can. This gets guide them right in. We're looking for a six lump, something that'll flow right to the back of there.
guys, we got one truck in. Boys are just finishing up. Speeding a little bit. That was nine and a half yards right there. Got a little hump there, Chris? Huh? Got a little hump you're pulling? <laughs> Biscuit mad at you or something? He's good there, huh? <laughs> you mad at him, Biscuit? I think if I made him really strong and pulling sticks, I'll be able to come on while he's pulling. Oh, yeah? Like bull crap to me. Well, we just need our second truck now, huh? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. If he comes in, we'll we got to do that little triangle right there with the next truck. So we'll probably start him off at like a four and a half slump. Mike, easy, buddy. Wasn't on video, I didn't have it panned over to you. <laughs> yeah. Do we have another 2x4? This is down in the back. What is? No, it isn't. Yeah, it's, it's sagging. Can you stick it in that water line pipe? You know what I'm saying? Or would it? No. Uh, I don't think we got one. We did ask for 30 minutes between our trucks because this is like a one lane road. I can't even get down here very easy, so. I want to make sure the one truck's out of here and the next truck's coming right in. But we're in good shape. That didn't take us very long. Mike's closing it right up with the big six foot bow float. Here comes our mud, second truck. He's a little bit late. We gotta get it in because we got a little square missing in our garage. We gotta get that in. So we're going to bring him in and whatever slump he's got right now, we're gonna fill that hole in. And then we'll probably add a little water to get him back to about a six slump. And then we will uh, blow in the back like we did the first truck. What's up, buddy? How we doing, my man? Whatever you got for a slump, dump it in that hole right there. You got a tight slump on there? If you got like a four or five, dump it in that thing, then we'll add a little water. Grab his chutes, boys. Get them chutes on, quick as you can. Stay tuned guys, like I said, we're gonna fill this square up, whatever he's got on there. And then uh, we'll add a little water to get back here so we can blow it in like we did the first truck. Kind of in the sun, still not too bad. Chris is raking it out. Stay tuned.
That's the end of our second truck, guys. We're definitely gonna have enough with nine yard balance that's coming to finish up. We should have a yard or so left over, which is fine. I'd rather have a yard extra than uh, run out. So things are going pretty good. We had a little bit of a gap between the first and second truck, but it wasn't bad. We were able to, to blend that right in nice. So get this next truck in and we'll be done. Wait to finish it. Oh, it looks pretty good now. How many wheelbarrows was that, boys? <laughs> About 10? Are here, guys. Bars in. I gotta get back to it, guys. <laughs> a little bit of a bowl in that board right there. Probably should have put a few another steak right there. Getting a little splatter, boys. Little bit, little bit. I'll hold my rebar well on them, guys. There we go. Had to push some dirt up against the form right here. Because it was bowing. We had a bow right here. Looking good. Hey Chris, do we want to pull that this way a little bit? Have him run that edge a little bit? Hey Mike? Run over there Mike and fill that in, okay? 
Yeah, I don't want you to do that. We need like a wet screen down the edge of here, bud. This whole triangle just fill in. Yeah, it looks like a lot of passing back and forth. Should have brought the 20. He loves that 20 footer. <laughs> that will freshen this edge up too. Not that it's too bad. This truck actually was here kind of when we wanted it. Yeah, perfect timing on this one. Hold that rebar up where I want it, guys. Mike understands the assignment, you know? Yeah. He understands the assignment. Yep. You want to fill that hole right there, too? I'm in, right behind you. You want to just keep going that way, Chris? Scrape him out a little bit and he can back it out of your way. All right, Mike, back up about six feet, buddy. Perfect. That friggin' form is bowing too. I like usually like to put a little dirt against these, but I didn't this time. But these guys are pulling this this way to get so that we got 16 foot going this way. That's what they're doing now. So that we don't, so that that screed's long enough. That's a 16 foot screed. Plus, we're also freshening this concrete edge right here. This gets like walking it together, walking the new concrete into the old concrete, kind of blends it together. It's in good shape though. Who <laughs> left that stake an inch high? Jesus. Look at that. One inch too high. Some of them. There was a boulder down there. Sure there was. <laughs> That's what we're going to say. Especially when I'm videoing, right? <laughs> Make it sound good. We hit a big rock there. The size of a car. Yeah. It's a big one. You're just about turning and burn if you want to do, unless you want to keep going that direction. Uh, okay. Bottom, uh, Get right out of his way for a second, boys. Let him get right in there. Some mud in there. Let Mike see what he's doing, huh? Stupid rebar right in his way. We got that stupid rebar right sticking up in his way. Yeah, he's got it. Keep that on and working with it. Pull that 
street trader on the other side of that. You're just getting used to it. Yeah, breaking in. It's like a good trowel, right? But breaking in. They got some rebar to get in there now from say so get get him over over here Mike a little bit right where you right where you are Mike he's gonna put some in there. I don't know but there's one right there. Yep, oh it's a meatball. Run a little out, we'll throw our rebar in. Where's that shoot scraper, Dustin? I need that. Yeah, let's get that. Sorry, buddy. That's probably good. We'll clean you from there. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's How about we got almost enough in there now? I think we're gonna be real close. Scrape them out a little bit. Take a little bit off his chute so it's not dripping. Yeah, there you go. Back up, Mike. We'll see what that looks like. Not quite. But I don't like taking it out. There we go. Yeah. little buddy just chilling can't even see him in the dirt buddy you cozy you're over here in the shade are you cozy little man got you right in the shade today oh you're working hard bob you're working hard my little man that's our mascot rotor you can stay down buddy you can just relax you're working too hard today you're getting a sweat rolling up on you well guys we got her in it's uh, right about noon, so we did pretty good. I think we started uh, right around 10 o'clock, so not bad. Went pretty good. We had a little gap between the first and second truck, but nothing terrible. Um, third truck was perfect. They sent Mike again on the third truck. He, uh, we're not too far from the plant today, probably seven miles from the plant. So Mike actually went back to the plant and got the third truck. I guess I can shut this laser off. We didn't need to use our wheelbarrows at all, as you can see. We ended up just shooting it right in. Got that? I was just gonna shut that off. Yep. All right. Rock and roll. We're looking good. Nice radiant heated uh, house slab here. Stay tuned, we'll do some finish work here in a little bit. We'll clean up and kinda got a weight on it, obviously. She's still real soft. Yeah, I'm leaving some fingerprints way too soft yet. But we're gonna dig out for, there's a garage door in the front here. We're gonna swell the edge of the pad there too, so. I actually just take this thing right off now, guys. Um, I took my plate off, the screws. And then I will pull this, uh, pull this right apart here. Take these screws out.
and we can take this contraption right out of our way. Show you how we do it. Take all our screws out. Just pull it right out of there. See, we get it out of there. And then we will pull these stakes out. Just like that. Twist it a little bit. Just like that, get the stakes out. Now I'll just take my mag and I'll put a little blob of concrete in them holes and we can mag right around these pipes and uh, they look a lot better than if you tried to do it later. That's how we do it. All you need is something to hold that until you get the um, concrete in there. It starts to set up. This is still not hard enough to uh, power trowel. You can see when you touch it, see how it moves guys underneath you, underneath your finger. I don't know if you can see that, but it's kind of flexing. That's not hard enough. You're gonna leave a, um, a big footprint in there. So that's how you check them. You just push on them. Or sometimes you can throw a rock on it. See how the rock bounces. So a small rock like this. Watch it. Let's see how big of a dent it was. See, it's way too soft. There goes Mike. See you, Mike. All right, I'm gonna get back to it. We're hitting edges and stuff. guys we are over here stripping the forms off today and we are going to put this foam board around the outside of it because this is a heated slab as you've seen in the video so we ripped these up on the table saw we're just gonna put it up against there and put some dirt against it put some gravel that we got there got a couple more loads today and we're going to uh there's going to be a flashing detail that sits under this wall and goes down and over the foam. That's how we're going to handle that. Um, because the wall is going to sit right on the, the wall sitting right on the concrete slab. They're going to use a treated plate and just build their walls right on it. It's just a simple ranch house, guys, really um, cost effective way to build here. So that's how we're going to do it. Heated slab. That's what we're doing. I'm in the skidster cabin the Kubota putting the foam around the edge here and then I'm just dumping this gravel up against it I gotta cut it got big biscuit over there leveling it out 
come along. Now we're doing a frost protected slab. Well guys, I'm just over here picking up Kevin the Kubota Skidster. Figured I'd show you how the slab looks. This is the finished product here. Got all our relief cuts in. There's a cut here right where the garage wall is going to be. And then the garage is cut down the middle both ways. And then it's cut down the middle that way. And there's two more cuts that way. Got our foam detail. It's going to be a flashing going over the foam under the wall. That's how they're going to do it. Radiant heat's in. There's a sleeve in there for the water line. I got it rough graded for them. We're gonna need some topsoil in here before they're done. But turned out really good. Gotta get the skid stirred and head to another job. Thanks for watching the video guys. I hope you like this uh, radiant heated monolithic slab that we built and uh, the way we did it. Kind of a nice way to do it. Laying the foam down like that and then building it up. Hit the like button, guys, if you liked the video. And uh, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of our content. We post a lot of videos.